Welcome once again to Season 2 of Tackle Primetime, powered by the National Collegiate Scouting Association. I'm Ashley Foltz. We're continuing to break down the tackle top 200 football players in America by examining the nation's top offensive linemen. So once again, here are Coach Randy Taylor and Coach Bob Kamel to break down the talent and discuss how recruits should handle visits to campus. Coach and Coach, take it away. Thanks, Ashley. Glad to have you back this episode. As a former offensive lineman myself, I know the old adage is true. I thought you were a wide receiver. <laughs> well, I was in my early days. Okay. The heart and soul of a team is its offensive line, especially the center. It all starts out up front. When I was out recruiting, it was critical to identify top offensive linemen with the right frame and right athletic ability to eventually be those big guys that control the line of scrimmage. So I want to start off our list with some of the top linemen in the country. Hey, Randy, here we go. And as you well know, one of my favorite positions to evaluate and maybe one of the most difficult positions to evaluate, and that's offensive linemen. We're going to get a look here at Mason Walters from Friendship High School in Wolfworth, Texas. One of the top offensive linemen in the country is committed to Mac Brown at Texas, and what a take he's going to be for the Longhorns. Coach, you watch him. He's playing center. He's already able to make the short snap, he, and he's physical and a big kid. He, he's really special and will be a great player. Well, you know, he's one of these offensive linemen that, you know, he's always in an athletic position. He's, he's, a, he's a true knee bender, not a waist bender, which gives, which gives him an opportunity to make contact and stay on that contact. He's a finisher. And by a finisher, what I mean is he's going to block all the way until the whistle. And that's very impressive. And that's what offensive line coaches look for. Coming in close number two is a player we are very familiar with at NCSA, Stavion Lowe. Low is a stud. He has great feet, terrific athleticism. He comes off the ball with a flat back to break the defender's will and smothers him. His ability to move so well makes him ver very versatile coach. He could play any position on the O-line. Well, I'm, I'm really proud to say that he's committed to one of my old office mates as a graduate assistant, Les Miles. And I can assure you, if there's a head coach in the United States of America that knows about offensive line play, it is Les Miles. He can line up at left tackle, coach. You see him come off the ball. He gets his hands into the defender and moves his feet until he knocks him off the ball. Welcome back to Tackle Primetime. Let's quickly look at a few more of the top big nasties in America. Coach, let's talk about Austin Long, Briarcrest Christian High School, Memphis, Tennessee, the 6'5", 268-pounder. Great room to grow. I don't think there's any question, and there's no walking in Memphis with this guy. He is all over the field. I mean, he makes a block, goes downfield, looks for a linebacker, squares up on the linebacker, finishes. You talk about blocking in space, that's the most difficult thing for a big guy. Left-handed stance, here he is right now, just behind the official. Boom, watch him come off the ball. Look out. Whoa. Wait till he gets to be 300 pounds, coach. He'll be walking in Memphis any time of day or night. <laughs> coach, we got Kevin Graff of the USC Graff Legacy. This young man is from Agora High School, 6'6", 300 pounds. You know, Pat Rule is the offensive line coach at USC, and he does a great job, considered by some to be one of the top offensive line coaches in the country. And he's going to do marvelous things with this young guy. And then you, know, you mentioned that he's at USC Legacy. I think that's critically important. I mean, USC, that's in his makeup. That's, that's a big part of him. I mean, this is a great fit. Well, he, he fits what they do. He's a big, tough, physical lineman but he's fundamentally sound. He steps with the correct foot all the time, and he's a big old son of a gun that's just gonna keep getting better. You can see when he, he steps, he got great footwork in his uh, first step off the line, gets depth, and uh, is gonna be a, a heck of a guy. Maybe move inside, but uh, uh, could be a right tackle as well. Coach, we're gonna talk about John Martinez, 6'2", 264 pounds. You know, that size thing probably makes him play inside at a guard because uh, they like those big, tall tackles. I mean, as, as from an evaluation standpoint, I don't think there'd be a college across the country that wouldn't want to take this kid. Look at him pull and trap. I mean, pull and trap. And we talked about linebackers uh, tackling through people. Those offensive linemen that pull and trap and block through the defenders are the ones that will always turn your head. Once again, we want to wrap up tonight's Tackle Prime Time with some insider information for all of you potential recruits out there. This week, 
We want to take recruits inside an extremely important experience, visiting campus and meeting a college staff. Absolutely. Critically important. There are different types of visits, official visits and unofficial visits. Official visits are only offered by coaching staffs to the top senior recruits in the country. They are visits that are paid for. Everything's paid for by the coaching staff, obviously up to a point with NCAA, NCAA regulations. You could take as many unofficial visits as you'd like. Those are visits that you would pay for. The rules for these visits are closely monitored by the NCAA. Unofficial visits are paid for the athlete and can happen at any time. In fact, we recommend athletes start visiting schools as early as freshman year. Exactly, Coach. The first step is to plan and set up your visit. You should first call or email the coach to let them know of your interest. Arrange a specific time to meet the coaching staff and the admissions office. Be sure to send the coaches your highlight video ahead of time as well as bring a copy with you when you visit. Finally, dress for success. This is a business trip. Make sure you are ready to make a great first impression. There's no second chance at a great first impression. For many years, I greeted young people and their families as they entered the initial reception area when we brought them in for the rec a recruit. I would automatically begin to put together a puzzle and pieces of that puzzle that would either fit our program or would be set aside for another program. When you meet a coach for the first time, it is extremely important that you arrive on time. Meet him with a firm handshake. Look him directly in the eye. These things are critically important at that good first impression. That's great advice, you master of the living room. Shut off your cell phones. Again, shut off your cell phones. Never, ever take a call on your cell phone while someone is speaking to you or when you're in an audience. There will be time to check your messages. Anyway, what could be more important than the mission at hand? This will serve you well your whole life. Ask questions while you're visiting. It's a great way to show interest. Think about the questions you're going to ask before you even get there. And it also gives you valuable information to use when it comes time to make that 40-year decision. And every visit has a different timeline, but it's important to be sure to handle yourself with class for the length of the entire visit. Every single person you meet will probably be quizzed by the coaching staff later to make sure you treated them with respect and were attentive. You need to show coaches that you are serious about being a student athlete at their university. Remember, you are being evaluated by someone every day of your life. Relax. Enjoy the trip. Attempt to remember names of people that you've met. Ask various people for their calling cards, for their business cards. Keep those cards. And yes, even drop a note or an email of thank you. That gesture, gesture could separate you from the crowd and make the difference. Lastly, thank the coaches for their invitation and let them know you appreciated the opportunity. And once again, a note or an email will go a long, long way, again, to separating yourself from the crowd. If for some reason you're on a game day visit and you have to leave early, let someone in authority know. Don't make it look as though you're not interested. Let them know you had a reason that you had to leave. Follow these suggestions and the trip home will find you confident, confident that your first chance at a good impression was successful. Awesome stuff, guys. That closes things out this episode. Remember to check back next episode as Coach Kamel and Coach Taylor break down more of the nation's top athletes and talk about what it takes to get recruited.